Do you read me? Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Comp Tower. This is Pacho. Do you read me, old? Pacho, this is Comp Tower. I read you Lima Charlie. Comp Tower, Comp Tower. Request permission to launch and commence the field op. Over. Stand by. Pacho, permission granted. I say again, permission granted. Roger that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up with your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps retired. Get some. Ara! Ara! Get some. Happy New Year's there, everybody. Just want to, you know, first of all, welcome the new year. Welcome you, the listener. And thank you one more time for allowing me to uh, every week to come into your home and give you you know this awesome show that i provide for you all and it's also therapeutic for me as well it's a way for me to get my story out there as well as you know bring some benefits and information to those who are still serving and those veterans who are out in the in the private sector as well we have a great show for you today just want to go ahead and say that you know as um just a quick you know note that the thoughts and opinions expressed by myself uh, or even my guests are not the thoughts and opinions uh, of Sitch Radio, uh, Airtable, StreamYard, and all the f- all the folks that put, bring this show to you, you know, to your home. And that sometimes, you know, myself and my guests, or even you, we may ag- not agree on the topic or anything. That's sometimes what's being said. So, with that being said, you know, you have the right to move on and listen to something else. And this is, you know, freedom of speech. Um, today's guest is uh, it's a dear close friend of mine, another fellow Marine, another fellow Colombian as well. Uh, he is uh, Mass Arn, Master Gunny Select, uh, Gino Osorio. He is a, a recruiter. He's been out in the field uh, bringing in you know, great, great uh, candidates to the Marine Corps for quite some time now. So with that being said, let's welcome Mr. Mr. Mass Arn, Gino Osorio. Get some. Hoorah. Bye, What's going on, doing? brother? How are you? How are you, my uh, friend? Doing great. I appreciate the invite. Hey, man. How's everything going for uh, you? Oh, uh, no. Things are great uh, on my side. You, doing the do, man. And, uh, you know, just bringing a good show to the folks out there and uh, just probably some good information, man. So, hey, man, let's just so let's just get started and, 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 di- and dive into it, man. How is the how is the recruiting field uh, in this day and age, man? I mean, it's recruiting. It still goes on every day's uh, every day's mission day, as we usually refer to it. But uh, <laughs> right. it's going great. It's going great. I mean, people are still enlisting. It's uh, different challenges. Every year, it's always different, right? Uh, last year, we had COVID going on and, you know, everybody working yeah, from how home. Was that? It, was, it was challenging, but you know what? The Marines were able to overcome. So we went from doing interviews in person, which is pretty typical, to doing interviews over Zoom or other type of video calls, you know, and then once they would commit, they would come into the office, you know, while keeping all the distances and everything else. So it was just different, but I mean, it, it still came through. Definitely wow. no, uh, may, maybe a little bit of a hiccup here and there at first, but after that it was pretty smooth and mission still got made. You know, what, what, you and I were recruiters uh, many, many years ago, back in, back in, wow, 06. That just means yeah. I'm getting a lot younger. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I know that one of the things that, uh, you know, depending on what the can, the age of the candidate, you know, having a PC parental consent uh, has this new era of telecommuting, you know, technology, so on and so forth. Has that enhanced or I guess aided you a little bit more getting that parental consent because mom and dad are can be on that uh, on, on that interaction with the recruiter or has it is or is it the same? It's about the same. I don't think that really has changed much. Um, I think parent availability is a little bit higher now because a lot of them are working from home. So usually that, that, you know, the old excuse of my mom's working, she can't be there. You know, they can't play that one no more, but you know, it, it's all, it's all the same. Still hasn't changed. Wow. You know, I know that, um, you know, one of the challenges for us uh, was the fact that, Hey, well, you got to get parental consent. And I was like, oh man, you know, depending what, I mean, there, there was so many things that influenced that, um, 
you know, particularly, you know, re religion wise, I know it was uh, oh, yeah. challenging with, you know, especially the kid was a Jehovah witness, you know, because of their, you know, their, their belief that, you know, they don't serve in the military, among other things that that was quite, quite difficult. So, uh, you know, I, I was able to, you know, I, I think I was the only one at that time, you know, I had one kid that was, but his, his mom, she pretty much the kid was so out of control at the time she signed them over to me and she goes he's your problem now good luck <laughs> but yeah i mean you know some of those what's up it, it, it definitely is different by you know religious and <laughs> upbringing different parts of the country everybody's a little bit different everybody has their reasons of why they like to support or they won't support the military but yeah i mean we still see a lot of that it's definitely there right has you know, and has it, among among you know, as well as this whole COVID nineteen nineteen, um, you know, has has this new society and this new thought process, you know, because you know every every you know every generation is kind of different. I know one of the things that we were facing back in the day was uh, we were still dealing with the conflict, you know, of Iraq uh, and during you know Operation Enduring Freedom. Uh, you know, those, yeah. those those were some of the things that we were facing because nobody, obviously, parents' concern is uh, obviously I don't want to lose my kid. Uh, right. You know, that was one of the things. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you guys are seeing out there out in, in, in recruiting duty? Uh, you know, whether it's the, this new conflict or or this new thought process, this society. Can, can you tell us, uh, expand a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, some of the challenges. Um you know, parents generally don't say, I don't want to lose my son anymore because we're not like actively at war. But I mean, a lot of, a lot of applicants still want to go to college. So they're still one of our competitors, right? Uh, minimum wage went up. So they get, they, there's these applicants starting to get paid a little bit more. You know, they think that they're starting to have some money. So a lot of times they want to wait off to see what their options are in the civilian sector. Uh, you know, um, Sometimes religion and stuff like that, they want to go do missions and everything else, but that's pretty normal. You know, we, we've dealt with that for a long time, but I think right now the economy, a lot of people are quitting their jobs instead of getting hired. There's a lot of opportunities right now to, to right. work, not just for the military, but in general. And I don't know what's going on really necessarily, but a lot of people are holding off before they start off. So that's kind of something that holds us back a little bit too. And I mean, COVID is, one of the excuses, you know, they don't either want to be in public areas or they don't want to, you know, go to recruit training and be in isolation. So sometimes we'll hear a little bit of that and getting the COVID-19 shot. That's a requirement now, right? Some applicants don't, you know, there's a lot of resistance from, from, uh, from young people that towards the shot still. So still dealing through that, but overall it's, it's just, a little bit of the same but we still kind of work through it so it's not really stopping us necessarily wow so you brought up two two really good points that i, I wanted to kind of touch on um is that yes there, about you know a lot of people are leaving their jobs and such i, I don't know if you listen to um my other show i had uh, russell levy and uh, him, you know, he he and I, um, we talk uh, offside. You know, we're good friends, just like you and I are. But um, he runs this nonprofit called Veterans Transition Support, and you know, he talked about there's a there's a phenomena right now going on. It's called the Great Resign, and you could Google this. And you know, for anybody that's listening to the show, you can actually Google. It's called the Great Resign. Is that that a lot of people are they're resigning their jobs, and right. that they're but. But the, there, there is an availability as far as the job market is. I mean, there's all kinds of jobs available. But people are there either is. just they're leaving their job or they're just not don't want to work. It's yeah, um, it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It blows my mind. Like, I don't know what I would do with my hands if I couldn't work. But a lot of people are leaving their job. I was listening on the radio yesterday and they said that in December, three percent of the nation quit their job. Yeah, three percent. Yeah, it may not sound like a lot, but if you take into account how many millions of people live in the United States, that's a lot of people leaving the workforce. Right. No, no. I. It's, I mean, it's. I forget how many millions of uh, American. You know, again, per if we if we follow the numbers of the census, 
I mean, those are, I mean, those are in the millions of yeah. Americans that are just saying, man, you know, I'm out. Um, you know, because, and I say that, and I, I, I break that up because uh, Russell himself, uh, he found himself in a, you know, he was running his nonprofit where he mm -hmm. was doing, you know, rather well as far as, you know, getting the sport and, you know, being able to pay himself and his staff members. And then he was still helping another, he was still tied to another organization. And, um, you know, what he said is, you know, had I read, you know, regarding the, the, the great resignation uh, and learned a little bit more, I think he says, even though I feel much better that I resigned that other job, um, you know, he says that, and that because, you know, he was just doing, he was spread too thin is what he's saying. And he says, but right. he said, I would, I would have gone about it and approached it much differently uh, because now he understood what was going on. And he would say, I'm just going to quit because I'm overwhelmed, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But, and, and the other thing that I wanted to, you know, touch up on is, you know, in regards to the COVID-19, not to get too, you know, in regards to politics and, and everything, but, you know, I rem remember back in the day when, when we were going through this whole anthrax, you know, vaccinations. Right, right, uh, yeah. As well, I mean, we had, we had a lot of individuals that didn't want to get, you know, the anthrax shot as well, you know. I mean, it's it's and again, it's OK to question it. Um, it just kind of it's it, it does make it difficult in the line of work that I was part and that you're still a part of uh, because sometimes you're just not afforded afforded that luxury because uh, it is, it, it, you know, you know, you're in a position that, hey, we got to make, you know, we're, we're part of this organization. We have to move forward because, you know, if you get deployed and so on and so forth. You know, what do you do? You know, so. Yeah, I mean, it, readiness is pretty important. And that's really the, the reason why they take it, why they do, they make these decisions as they, as they make them. You know, readiness is important. Every Marine needs to be ready to either deploy, fight, or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of the, the bottom line on that one. Yeah. No, and, you know, it, 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 it does make it difficult, especially, you know, for example, if, if we didn't have the anthrax vaccination and we, we did happen to step into an environment where, you know, that happened to be prevalent, you know, what do you do then? So, I mean, these times are tough and, you know, it's, it's some challenges that, and that I wouldn't want, you know, as much as I love my Marine Corps, uh, you know, and <laughs> I, I root for my brothers and sisters, you know, guys like yourself still, you know, still at it. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't wish it because I mean, some these times are challenging, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, th there, there's been many challenges on recruiting duty ever since you and I started all the way till now. You know, when you and I started, it was you, you know the plus up the Marine Corps needed to grow over twenty thousand Marines. You know, th that was hard. Right. That was challenging. You know, and, and all throughout this whole time that I've been on recruiting duty. You know, every, every year it's always something new. You know, either they need new type of MOSs where people have certain qualifications or the Marine Corps wants to tighten up their qualifications in certain areas or the medical standards change. You know, that's always, you know, complicated. So every, every now and then there's always stuff that we deal with, but it keeps moving along. I know there's, no, there's, I mean, there's a big emphasis on the, the cyber stuff. You know, they want everybody to take these cyber tests and everything. Okay. Because we're moving into, you know, all these advanced MOSs now. So there's definitely a push to go into the future and how the Marine Corps is going to approach things. Now, has this, uh, you know, my wife's son, he is, he was in the Air Force, was a, was one of the first few to get augmented into the Space Force. And hopefully we'll be able to have him okay. here uh, next week uh, if his PAO, you know, clears him. And that guy's a major mm -hmm. already. Uh, uh, but nonetheless... <laughs> How, how, how has, has any of that stuff, uh, you know, has the Marine Corps looked at, Hey, you know, this being the next, not, you know, not to sound all nerdy, and, uh, but is this, the, is this the next, um, you know, the new frontier is the Marine Corps focusing on that and as well as creating or allocating spaces, uh, MOS wise for, for such, um, you know, organization uh, as, as like the space force or, or for the Marine Corps. No, not really. I don't I mean, I don't really know, but I don't think that I mean, the, the focus of the Marine Corps is still, you know, maritime force. Okay. You know, so I, I don't believe the Marine Corps is going to go there, but 
I mean, it's up, up in the air. I mean, the Marine Corps is ever changing. You know, we do have to adjust to the times and to, you know, to the enemy. So, right. but I don't believe so. No. Now, is is it true? Uh, so let's work. Let, let's talk a little bit about uh, demystifying some a couple of myths. Uh, you know, I and I know, I know some of the answers, uh, but you know, okay. just for our audience' sake, um, you know, hey, do do you get a bonus for every person that that you sign up that you bring into the Marine Corps? Absolutely not. I wish that'd be awesome. <laughs> I, know, I like right? making money. <laughs> <laughs> no, know, no that, bonus. That was one of the big. Yeah, because they're like, oh, you you're not gonna get a bonus because of me. It's like, dude, I just I just get to, I just get to stop sweating for the rest of a month, and then next <laughs> next month I start all over again. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, it's it's the job, you know. Uh, right. When you first when, when Marines first come on recruiting duty, it's usually a three year t three year tour, and for three years, that's the responsibility. That's the mission is to uh, bring, you know, young men and women to to join the Marine Corps, but. There's no extra pay. There's no extra incentives. There's no bonuses or anything like that. There's no paid time off or trips that you might win or any of that. Right. And how difficult has has any of the standards or the curriculum changed at at the academy? Uh, obviously, yeah. You know, since '06, uh, when '06, yeah, <laughs> when I went through. Um, has 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 the curriculum changed uh, for the recruiting? What's their focus now? Um, you know that you're aware of. Uh, I guess you know from from your experience. Uh, it changed a little bit, not much. I mean, the length is still the same; still lasts seven weeks. Um, let's see. They they teach digital communication now. You know how to, how to interact with applicants through the internet, whatever that medium might be. And other than that, I mean, they still teach all the same stuff. Wow. I, I you know, one of, one of our counterparts, uh, I don't know if he's still in the Marine Corps, Gitron, I think he was one he of the first is. pioneers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, and I got to, back then, and man, and I'm really, I'm, we're really dating ourselves here. I mean, back then was MySpace. And, you know, I yeah. got the idea from him that he's like, hey, man, if you want to find a kid, just look him up on MySpace and all the information to, for the pack card, you know, the pack card. Their being phone the number would be listed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's how that's how I you know because of this dude, that's how I was like, oh man, yeah, you know this whole you know you know MySpace thing, um, it wasn't even called social social media back then, but you know? I you know I I even opened up an account, uh, I don't even know if it's still there, but um, that's how I was able to find these kids and start getting you know get trying to get in touch with them, um, you know because you know. They were, they were so elusive back then too, especially you know, with, with you know the whole um, you know war on terrorism and such. So, uh, yeah. but so now you, you guys use you know what they, do they teach you? Hey, use Snapchat, um, Instagram, this that. Is, I mean, do they? Yeah, do they there's, touch there's up a few that are, there, there's a few that are authorized. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, they, they teach you how to how to interact, how to take pictures, how to communicate with applicants. That way, they understand that you know. Some guys not being creepy on the internet. It's just, you know, it's just business. Wow. I mean, hey, I mean, I guess we got we got to, you know, we got to be able to, you know, roll roll with the times and as far as far yeah. and also the, change, the changes. Yeah. Because if I mean, if not, I mean, you're you're pretty much, um, you know, dead in dead in the water. I mean, you know, closing yourself out of, uh, out from a school and not being able to find, you know, candidates. That that is your bread and butter. You know. Yeah. I mean, if you if you've seen the the one of the latest Marine Corps recruiting commercials, where the where the guys like walking like I think it's like a dark alley or something like that. It's all like digital on the background. He's got his phone out, and it starts. It looks like almost like a video game. You know, that's really what what the you know young Americans are into nowadays, and that's really what opens their eyes. So, changing the way the Marine Corps is perceived is obviously important with the times. You know, we we still we can't have a Marine chasing the dragon back when you and I got recruited, <laughs> you know, it, it's just different. <laughs> you know, you, you bring up, so I got a, I, I got a, <clears throat> a quick funny story. You know, you, you bring up the, the whole dragon thing. So I used to, I was right there in, uh, in, in Claremont uh, on the little PC office. Uh, and so I used mm -hmm. to share, on the other side, I had the, the army and there was this dude, um, his name was uh, Sergeant Mays. His dad was a colonel in the army and this guy was actually when he went to west point and uh 
think after he graduated, he even mm -hmm. he just he didn't take the commission and went enlisted. Solid dude. Okay. Him and I used to always compete every time we went to high school. Who could get the most numbers from prospective candidates? Um, right. And such. Anyways, but I think one of the best army speeches to bring a kid over onto the army was done by this dude because the walls were very thin. And, and I heard him say, he's like, hey, dude, when are you going to be, you know, why do you want to join the Marine Corps? When are you ever going to fight, you know, fight a dragon? When are you ever going to climb a, a, a mountain <laughs> and then change into your uniform and do dress, you know, a sword manual and or fight real life chess pieces Dude, and I'm on the other side. I'm laughing. Dude. I'm I'm literally crying la hearing this dude. And I was just so after he was done, um, you know, I saw the kid leave the office because the, the main door had a little bell. I went over there and uh -huh. I was like, I was applauding him, dude. And I was I was like, hey, did did, did he join? He's like, nah, he'll be seeing you next week. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the chess piece was important to him. <laughs> yeah, I everybody guess, has, everybody you know. has needs. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but, but it resonates, you know, you got to be able, you know, as, as a recruiter, you got to be able to, you know, one thing, think very quick on your feet and you always have a response. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I don't know if, uh, I, I know you're more on the, on the management side, uh, you know, cause you have a, you have a crew that, that you manage and such, but right. uh, I know I, on my, on my way to go and talk to a kid, um, you know, I would always play the what if game. I'm like, okay, you know, Yep, he, he, I'm going to say this, I'm going to come, uh, oh no, if he says that, I'm going to come back with that, or I'm going to come back with what, you know, on, on the books, it says this, so on and so forth. Do you still, you know, preach that to your, to your team members as well? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> maybe not so specific to where we have, you know, things that we are ready to say, unless we right. really understand exactly what they want and why they want it. But I mean, the, really what we teach more, more than anything is to ask questions ask questions to understand what they want, why they want it, why it's important. You know, there's a little bit in the Marine Corps for absolutely everybody. You know, a lot of people think the Marine Corps is not for me. That could be a, could be a, a statement. That could be a reality, but everybody could succeed within the Marine Corps, you know, as long as they want to join, as long as, long as they find something that they want to do in there. So, being able to express that and show them because a lot of people are like, oh, I, I want to be in business. How is the Marine Corps going to help me do that? Well, the Marine Corps really is almost, if anything, like a corporation. We, we have people that work in business. We have people yeah. that work in accounting, you know, and, and sometimes they don't see that because all you think is, is they're infantry and, you know, tanks. Well, we used to have tanks, artillery, you know, and, and they don't really see anything past that because they just don't know. But really being able to explain that, that's the key. That's the key to it. Right. And, and so like you, like you were saying, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but finding the, the need behind the need, you see what I did there? <laughs> see, I still have, <laughs> and, still got you it. know, <laughs> hey, hey, man, I, you know, I still, I still preach the good, uh, you know, the good word out there uh, because, and this leads me to the next, in my next, the, the next topic is, it, you know, it is a business and even the worst service member uh, you know i guess you know we call them shit birds in the marine corps uh, yeah but that individual is still going to leave with something very positive that's still going to separate that person from the general population out in the private sector i mean you know and, and even to this day i i still use all the other tools and skills that i learned while while i was in in the marine corps i mean it's I, and it's made me who who I am today. I mean, as a safety professional, aside from doing this podcast, I mean, it, it is because of the, the the things that I learned in the Marine Corps that uh, you know I've been I've been able to do really well in, in this in this career field. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the the attention to detail. You know, the all those things that. You know that not only we're beaten to you and me by our drill instructors, but also by those awesome mentors that you know people like yourselves still doing it out there. Um, you know, preaching, "Hey, devil dog, you should be doing it this way," so on and so forth. I mean, those skills that still help me out there. And do do you still, um, you know, how is it like you do you, when you mentor these new young NCOs that are coming into the recruiting duty? Uh, is the mindset a little different or is it the same? I mean, 
then, what what is the difference between then and now? <clears throat> I mean, the generations change, right? Well, you know, when we went to boot camp, they they saw right. the the NCOs and the staff NCOs saw it's different. We were a different generation. A lot, same thing with you, probably. The gener generation is a little bit different now. You know, back then for fun, we used to, you know, always play sports, stay outside of the house. Now they play video games or they do other things, right? They uh, they like to be influencers, do on YouTube, make videos for TikTok and all these other things. So the generations do change, but the core is really still there. You know, people still want to be successful. They still want to gain certain attributes and learn certain technical skills. They still have things they want to accomplish in life. So the mentorship is still the same to be able to develop just like we were developed and get them, uh, you know, what they need. And I mean, the goal of the Marine Corps is still the same, which is to return a better quality citizen back to the civilian world when they're done serving. So that hasn't changed. No, I th I think, uh, you know, that resonates even with me. I mean, because at some point in time, this, you know, that career ends. As much as we would love to, you know, mentally that we would love to go on, uh, sometimes <laughs> the body says, uh, hey, brother, uh, I, don't think, I don't think you can keep doing those PFTs and those 20 pull-ups without any consequences. You know what I mean? But, you know, now being on the other side of the fence, you know, Again, it all the things that I learned while I was in the Marine Corps were, you know, have just helped me tremendously and have made me know who the, yeah. the person that I am that I am today. And I mean, I'll I'll still take the good if I was to do it all over again. I I would still you know take the good and the bad because um, you know it's it's helped me and it's made you know it's made me very successful. I mean, shoot, we you know we could go a, a list a, the laundry list of many individuals who mm -hmm. who have served. Um, you know, movie stars, um, you know, musicians, uh, as well as fam famous uh, business owners that, you know, they learn all these things, not just the Marine Corps, but just, you know, the armed forces as, as a whole. I, th I think right. uh, anybody that serves, uh, you know, it's, it's still going to, it, it'll still be a positive influence, even if you're the most, you know, if you're just worse than, you know, than a football bat, you know, uh, <laughs> I, th I think you still be a better individual after after your service you know you know what i mean no absolutely and and you know you learn so much just by you know by the service by the mission by whatever it is that you do in the marine corps i mean i remember when i started going to college which was actually back when you, when you and i were still recruiting and yeah. almost all my classes maybe besides maybe economics you know it's it's all the stuff that we did in the, in the marine corps already you know, yeah. they're all very similar, you know, project management, leadership and everything. They're all similar, which is absolutely what helped me get through school a lot easier. So there's a, all the life lessons we learned in the Marine Corps will definitely prepare us, you know, to be able to be better civilians once we decide to move on from the Corps, regardless if it's four years or 20 or plus 20. You know, it, it's still definitely a great experience. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and you know, you bring up a, a, another great point is that all those skills, even help you in the in the private sector. If you're a senior staff NCO or um, or officer, uh, some organizations, because uh, again, you know, finding out through uh, my buddy Russell, uh, you know, so you can get an, actually a program management certificate without having to go through all the rigaments of the process because of the skills and training yep. and so, so on and so forth, you'll automatically become a prog uh, program management, uh, have that certificate that you can actually put that on your resume. And because again, I mean, from the moment that you start it is that, hey, you know, especially in, in, a, in, a, in a branch that is, that's smaller than, than all the other armed services where, you know, you have an E3 Lance Corporal, hey, you know, the, these kids are already, you know, fire team leaders or they're, they're in charge of actual missions out, uh, you know, out in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other other places. I mean, whereas in other armed, other armed services, because again, they're much li larger. You have a lieutenant or a captain leading those missions. You know, we're right. doing other other folks like that. You know, so. Oh yeah, you know, very it's true. Very true. And, and not yeah. and not only combat scenarios, but also humanitarian scenarios, and, and just the different countries where we get stationed at, where we interact with all the population, you know, that live there, being able to to you know, pr provide and show, you know, 
how much a, a Marine can grow, no matter how young you are, because the responsibility is there. No, uh, I think I think you're you're right in you know in, in all aspects. How so? If if anybody was thinking of joining the Marine Corps, I mean, what is the process for them to you know get started uh, if they want to join the service or you know the Marine Corps in particular? Since that's what you're you know you're representing right now. Right. So I would say, I mean, obviously there's a lot of steps that you got to take, but the key is to sit down with the recruiter and find out why you want to join. Because learning that and understanding why you want to join and why you want to become a Marine is very important to help your motivation to get you through the training. Because as, as a lot of people know already, you know, boot camp is in the Marine Corps is probably the toughest one out of all the services. So you got to really yeah. want to be there. You got to really want to earn that that title of United States Marine. But the process is just like it's been for years. You know, you sit down with a recruiter, you take your ASVAB test, the Armed Service Vocational Aptitude Battery. You take the physical with the doctors, make sure there's nothing wrong with you. And after that, you can swear in, they run background checks on you, make sure that there's nothing in, you know, in the closet. And you get a boot camp date and you choose your job. You know, you choose whatever you want to do in the Marine Corps, depending on how, if you qualify for it or not. And then you ship to boot camp and then the process begins. But it's still about the same. No, that's no, that's that's good to hear. I mean, I'm glad that there's uh, uh, you know that there's still continuity in some in regards to some of the processes that you know yeah. that were, from when I was doing it back in the day, um, you know, to to this day and age. Uh, I wasn't really you know because every time we and I talk, I mean, we don't just like, hey, how's the Marine Corps going and how's recruiting? No. I mean, <laughs> I just stuff that we don't we don't talk about. It, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm glad that you know pretty much the the process is still the same. You know, yeah, you know how they say because, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> right, right. No, and I, I, th I think, you know, one thing that I will say is that whoever came up, the individual that came up with what, what is it called, um, systematic recruiting, uh, if it's still called that, uh, whoever came up with that, I mean, the dude is a freaking genius. I mean, um, and then for the audience too, I mean, there is a there is a mathematical. Uh, formula as to how many phone calls you got to make a month how many how many faces you gotta you gotta talk to in person or you know tell us or telecommute or whatever um, as well as how many handshakes how many meetings before you get an actual yes and then the more yeses right. then those numbers decrease but you know whoever came up with that that dude is a freaking genius because i mean that system if you work it the shit works. I mean, let's just let's just oh, yeah. let's just go ahead and say it. You know, uh, no, absolutely. You know, I, mean, I remember I it's, it's been around since like I believe the seventies or so, and it hasn't changed really. <clears throat> the essence still that we've added a couple things, you know, but other than that, it's still the same. It's a matter. Of pretty I, I remember. Yeah, I, I remember when that when I first started. I think it was like six hundred and forty six. Phone calls, that, you know, for me, I think that, and I was just like, what the fuck? You know, I was just like, shit, that's a lot of phone calls, you know? Um, but as time went on, uh, you know, the numbers kept decreasing. And, uh, you know, obviously it, 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 you get a little better and better. Um, I still, I, I mean, I, shoot, I still have somewhere, if I dig around in my shit, I still, I still have my, um, uh, my SNR book. As a scheduling results yeah. book, I still yeah, I have it too. somewhere with. I do too. Somewhere, <laughs> with, somewhere hidden in my my garage. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, is there is hey one thing? So how how can, if anybody's interested in, in joining the Marine Corps uh, and they want to talk to you a little bit more, where where can they find you? Uh, if they want to talk to me specifically, they can look for me on LinkedIn. Uh, I believe my handle is Gino uh, Dash Osorio. And if they just want to ask questions about the Marine Corps in general, marines.com. You know, marines.com is the easiest way to to request information and the local recruiter reach out to you. You know, he or she will answer all your questions. And, you know, the process starts there. Okay. All right. Well, do you know, I want to take the time, man, to... Thanks so much for... I know, I know it's, uh, you know, our time difference is, a, is, is quite a bit, but... I know you're still uh, doing the good thing uh, over there working uh, from your office and such, but 
I just want to appreciate and tell you, hey, thank one, thanks for your service, brother. Two is <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you doing, you know, you doing what you're doing, uh, and you know, still, uh, you know, walking walking the beat, man, and uh, selling the Marine Corps. Because uh, I mean, I, I know that job is not easy because. Hey, once they're, once they're, the recruit is done with you, they fall in love with the drone instructors and they pretty much forget about you. Um, but yeah, very, you are the true. first face and in interaction that they have with, with the Marine Corps. So and, you know, I, I thought my job was very important you know, during that time. But I just want to thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy, busy day and joining us today on our on our podcast, brother. So oh, absolutely. Thanks podcast. so much for that the invitation, brother. man. Hey, anytime. Uh, can we bring you back if any, uh, you know, if it's okay? Yeah, absolutely. Let me know. Awesome. All right. Well, I don't, you know, I'll just go ahead and, um, you know, I'll let, I'll let the audience know that one, if you want to get in touch with Gino, you can, you can shoot me a direct message or you can also, like he said, you can find him on LinkedIn. He's also on my, uh, on my, on, on my social media as well as on my LinkedIn. Uh, but it's a new year, everybody. If anybody out there is interested in joining the Marine Corps, please do so or any service and, you know, pay, pay it forward you know, because, you know, the United States is a great nation to be a part of. And, you know, what a great country and, you know, time to time to be in the service. I mean, it's times are really great. And next week we'll even get to talk to somebody that's um, that's in the Space Force. So uh, but that's all the time we have today, everybody. Uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and index right here. And with that being said, folks, hey. I am out of here. All right. Get some. Take care now.